Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. This is Umar Sharif here and today I'll be talking about a very interesting topic and that is about the beard and the turban and the thawb and the Islamic dressings that which the women wear. So why is that the Muslims they dress differently? Why is that they sport the beard? Why is that they wear the turbans? And these are kind of questions that I keep getting from a lot of people from people of various faiths because I keep interacting with people of various faiths time and again at the studio and in public places and we have a lot of interfaith dialogues. So in the process a lot of people have their queries and one of the very most uh, listened question is about the beard and the headgear and all that stuff. So I'll be sharing some perspective. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said it is recorded in, in uh, Abu Dawood the hadith book man tashabbaha bi qaumin fa huwa minhum whosoever imitates a group of people he is from among them so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if you imitate a group of people then you belong to those people so the prophet he always wanted the muslims to have an identity like for their faith for what they are carrying it should be seen by their outer appearance let me give you an example Generally on a Saturday night in Bangalore, we tend to find the youths having party time and they go to an extent of drinking alcohol and the policemen, they have a hard time there. You know, in the night times when they're going for a patrolling, they happen to stop in certain junctions to ensure that they catch those who are drunk. So in the course of time, they catch the youths, they talk to them and they come closer to them and smell them. They have a device to check the alcohol and all that. And finally, they find them and reprimand and send them off. And it so happens that sometimes when I'm passing by on the streets in the car and I approach a junction where you find the policemen there to catch the youths and those who are drunk. And when they see me sporting the beard and wearing a turban and looks more like a Muslim, of the identity they come closer to me and then they say oh he's a muslim let him go you know they say it in the local language oh sai brupa you are muslim or you are a bit bitty oh this man is a muslim he's a practicing uh, righteous muslim that's what they mean you know sai bru means someone whom they respect and they say a bit bitty let him go so this happens because they know that the muslims don't drink alcohol and practicing muslims surely they don't drink alcohol uh, it's a different story that a lot of people amongst the youths uh, who have uh, strayed away from the religion and they are not very much staunch in adhering to the rules and regulations of Islam, they might indulge in drinking alcohol. That's a different story altogether. But for those who are practicing Islam and who look more Islamic and they uh, show that out through their actions and by their appearance, the people who can gauge people you know they generally they say like we can understand that you are practicing people and they let them go so having said that i i'm trying to uh, put forward the importance of beard why do the muslims sport beard if you look into the historical references and the historical scriptures of various faiths you will come across that not only prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but even the earlier prophets, including Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, Moses, may peace be upon him, Abraham, Noah, Harun, Aaron, all of these prophets, they were all sporting beards. If you look into the historical references, you'll find when Musa alayhi salam, he held the beard of Ar Harun alayhi salam. You'll find it in the Quran. And you'll also find that uh, in any of the church, you know, most of the church where they have certain portraits of personalities like their saints and the prophets and whom they worship, you will come across some portraits where they have an image of a man uh, with a long hair and a beard. And they say, this is Jesus Christ. Now, we don't say that is Jesus Christ, although because we say that we haven't come across uh, the real picture of Jesus Christ and we haven't seen Jesus Christ in person. So we don't say this man. But at the same time, what they say is that they show an image of a person where a man sports a beard and they say, this is Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him. So they acknowledge that Jesus Christ was sporting a beard. 
So it is a tradition of all the prophets. It was the tradition of all the prophets. So it is not something new. And it is part of a fitra. Fitra means natural inclination. We don't have to do anything much to let the beard grow. It grows all by itself, isn't it? It's something which is part of your nature. So we say it is something part of the nature and every man and every uh, Muslim, he by nature, he's been gifted with this, uh, you know, appearance of growing the beard. Another aspect is that why is that the Muslims want to grow the beard or leave the beard as it is? It is because of the love that they have for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu If you see in this world, if someone loves another person, he would tend to do anything what pleases that person. And today's times you come across, you know, the love affairs. If a man loves a woman, you know, he, he don't mind doing anything. He would say he would travel oceans and he would spend millions just to ensure that he can keep his love intact. So he, he can do such a sacrifice to ensure that he can keep his partner happy. Now in this case, when we Muslims, we love Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we imitate that great personality in whatever ways that we can, in the mannerisms, the way that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke, the way that he walked, the way that he did business, the way that he engaged with these family folks. In all the matters, the Muslims want to imitate the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one of the aspects of imitation is his outward appearance. He used to sport the beard and the Muslims out of love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we sport the beard. Having said that, let me tell you one very important experience that I've had. One time when I was, um, you know, in Bijapur, it was a fort where I had been with the beard and uh, with the um, turban and all that. And uh, I came across a lot of uh, non-Muslim families getting very curious to understand who I am. So they came close to me, they interacted with me, they talked to me and they loved the way I was sharing some thoughts and uh, we, you know, we exchanged some wonderful moments. What I'm trying to say, in general Muslims, we must not feel, you know, apologetic of what you are. You should not feel ashamed or shy uh, away from wearing your identities. Just because people associate you to somebody else who is not uh, socially a good example, if I have to say. You know, some of the terror outfits, they are compared with the current times, the way the Muslims sport the beard and the turbans that they wear. And the people, you know, they tend to compare the contemporary personalities to the beards and the turbans. We should say that we don't wear the turbans or sport the beard because of these personalities. We are wearing the turban and we are sporting the beard because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was found doing this. And we do it because we want to imitate the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not any other personality. If you say this, they will understand. But many times we don't explain to them and we don't want to bother uh, uh, clarifying all the doubts. So we want to escape from the situation so we don't even sport the beard and we don't even wear the Islamic identities. So rather what should be the case, you should feel proud of your identity and you should ensure that you practice your religion always to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hope you enjoyed this. Wa khiru damana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.